Hey everyone, here today I'm going to interview a person who is very humble, down to earth, and at the same time very knowledgeable because he has stored an astonishing rank of three in the NEET SS 2022. Let us all welcome Dr. Sachin Krishna. Hi, Sachin. Hello, sir. And how are you doing? I am good, sir. I'm feeling very happy with the rank. Generally, the first question I tend to ask to most students is like whether you expected this rank or not. So usually I tend to ask to all the students. I didn't expect such a good rank. Like uh, after the exam, I thought maybe I'll do well, but I didn't expect this rank. Your preparation was good. Plus at the same time, you are confident after the exam. Yes. Great. And let us move on to the questions directly. So first, yes. I would ask like, what are the source of preparation? Because this is a common question. I know that. But what did you prepare? So what is your primary source of preparation? One, I read uh, Harrison, Harrison textbook I read uh, for the PG preparation, for the PG exam mainly. Uh, and then prep ladder videos. And uh, along with prep ladder videos, actually they provide the notes also. So that was also very helpful. Uh, so I combined with the prep ladder videos along with the notes. So that was actually very useful because it helped in uh, building concepts, your videos as well as uh, uh, other search videos also, including the specialities, all the search videos. It was very helpful actually because uh, more than uh, theory knowledge, like it was more of building of concepts and understanding medicine. So that actually helped us more in uh, preparing better rather than cramming up facts. Okay. So it was a better way of preparation is what I felt. Okay. And building concepts because you know that uh... Even at a neat SS level, when it comes to internal medicine, they're asking more factual questions. If you look at yes. the, the last exam, I felt like there were a little bit of way too much of factual questions. So like more of genetics were asked, if you remember. Yes, actually, and, this time, actually, there was a lot of uh, many factual one-liners, many yes. genetic syndromes. So yes. such questions were a lot. Despite all these things, how important is the conceptual building? Uh, I feel that it is very important. Like even though uh, many questions may be like that, but uh, building the concepts actually helps us rule out options. Like even if we do not know much about uh, this thing, we will be able to rule out certain options if we know what the thing they are asking is about. Correct. That's so what that's why I keep on telling students because once they get some sort of factual questions in one particular exam, they resort to non-conceptual ways of preparation. They start going for more one-liners. No, it's not. Actually, once you have good concepts, whatever kind of toppers you interview, whether at a need PG level or at a need SS level, everyone does the same thing. Conceptual building is more important, key for scoring in any exam for yeah. that matters. Let it be USMLE or let it be your PLAB exam or let it be your need SS, whatever may be the exam. And having yes. said about Harrison, and I wanted yes. to know like whether you read line by line with regards to Harrison or... You read no, I, only important topics. I don't think that reading line by line is that feasible also. Awesome. And I don't think people will remember even if you read something like that. I actually read the only the main portions, like especially what we regularly see and what is more important, what is usually covered. That is, those are the topics which I actually read properly. Not all the, like from bind to bind, I have not read Harrison. Yeah, because often students ask me, sir, whether is it important to read Harrison line by line? I say, no, it's yes. not important to read it line by line. You have to just pick up the topics that have been asked in your exams and yes. study those topics probably line by line. So not the entire Harrison line by line. That's not feasible. Yes, also, that, like what you said, yes. to be honest. that is what even I think. Yes. And uh, honestly, how much time you feel is enough for the preparation? Because you have scored such a good rank, you are the best candidate to say like how much time is ideally required. Yes, like I feel that like if uh, someone has prepared, like if you prepare properly for your PG exit exam, that is your final exam, if you have prepared properly you have, uh, through the three years you have studied, then uh, three to four months should be sufficient is what I feel. By so seeing by solving MCQs, seeing the videos at that time should be sufficient is what I feel. Okay, so videos and in a sense, like how important they are. So, you know, like you have watched the prepared dresses videos and how important they were and how good they were. I felt that they were very useful, sir. Especially, uh, like I told, like it helped to build the concepts rather than just cram facts. So, what it actually did was let I used the prepared notes and uh, along with the videos, I made the notes using the printed notes. So, I could do it faster. Like I played it at 1.75 to 2x uh, because the notes were already printed. So, I just could add whatever I felt was needed extra. So that way I could cover a little bit more questions in a fast step. Right. And how important are the MCQs? Because I think you would have uh, done quite a lot of MCQs in the SS app as yes. well. 
and how important yes, yes. those mcqs i feel that uh, more than just keeping on revising the notes uh, solving mcqs is uh, more important than that because uh, solving mcqs will help you recognize what mistakes you will be committing in the questions so right. that next time uh, you may not be you will not repeat those mistakes and i want to ask just one thing um, that you have read the preparatory essay mcqs also and yes. how closely they were mimicking your exam because many students told like some of the mcqs uh, in the neat ss portion were actually kind of factual so i always used to tell them that when nb starts preparing question paper you tend to get a lot of factual questions especially when it comes to internal medicine this has always been the case in the last so many years that is why purposefully we have kept a lot of factual questions like 20 to 30% yeah. see in the ss portion there will be some yeah. factual questions and just i want to yes. know like how closely they were related to your neat ss exam uh, many questions were like similar patterns eh? like may not be the exact questions per se but the pattern was uh, in the many questions were very similar is what i felt because uh, the type of the questions the content that was asked was almost similar the topics that were covered were almost similar is what i felt yeah because we have revised the q bank extensively on the q bank 2.0 we have made sure yes. that the questions actually mimic the nba pattern and to be honest in the upcoming q bank 3.0 what we are planning is we are planning to expand the q bank so the student can start preparing from the first year of the post graduation itself and it will be okay. a separate session on more knowledge building also so we're going okay. to reflect more questions with regards to knowledge building plus at the same time there will be long questions lengthy questions along with an equal distribution of even factual questions and we are even planning to you know like completely Uh, change the explanations also so that what our idea is just if the students read those questions they should be able to like read the harrison okay so okay. it's like nothing more should be required so that's what we are trying to do in the next qbank 3.0 but nevertheless and how the paper was and what did you expect in the exam and whether your expectation was met by the nb or you felt the paper was a little atypical it's different uh, actually i I expected the paper to be more of a clinical oriented like maybe i felt they'll give case scenarios and then like lengthy questions but when i saw the paper it was more like a factual type there were cases but they were few many questions were one liners and based on syndromes more of factual type paper is what i felt this time around yeah you felt like little bit out of your expectations yes. i felt this time the bouncer was the genetics part only nobody expected yes, those many questions yes. for genetics and exactly like i always keep saying students that when it comes to nb exams you need to be expecting these sort of bounces they will suddenly ask some questions out of the blue you don't really know like from where they are going to ask and sometimes they'll give some factual questions like number based questions it's really difficult to get rid of and that's why you need to be thorough with each and every topic and how important the statistics part so they ask some questions in statistics yeah there were some uh, four or five three or four questions from statistics i don't think it was the bulk of the questions but there were a few questions i think basic statistics should cover it like what we know from our neat pg days or the like ug days should cover it it was not a very high five statistics by statistics just basic stuff which we usually which we tend to know by the end of our training is what they ask is what i felt okay the so expert what, questions were the what's the proportion of clinical questions because i have not attended the paper i've just heard from the student so what is the proportion of clinical questions proper clinical questions according to you around 30 to 40% were i think case based questions case based questions remaining yeah less, and more than 50% are factual questions only more of one liners yes 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 so why i ask this question is because i want to know whether you had any time crunch or not because if it is more lengthy more clinical based you will need more time so yes. did you have i think time? time i don't think time was much of an issue with this paper but the thing was the options were very confusing so that was a little time consuming like even though it was mainly factual the options were very close by so many options it was a little difficult to uh, rule out so that took a little time but other than that the questions per se were not very lengthy or not time consuming so questions were not consuming rather than your uh, options itself are options. consuming yes okay final question how many questions do you think one has to attend when it comes to your neat ss exam i mean it's a straight for easy question i think it is better to attend all the questions exactly yes yeah so because when, i don't think negative marking is not that high 
why just one fourth and uh, it is better to attempt all the questions is what i feel yeah same so at ss level man, maybe at a need pg level maybe you can think about leaving certain questions but i do feel like at ss level like you need to try and attempt almost all the questions maybe one or two especially if you feel like it's completely factual statistic based so maybe one or two but apart from that i would recommend that everyone should attend all the questions you should not leave off any questions at all so what are the take homes from your interview like if you study well in your post graduation you need much lesser time you can read the rewards that's what i learned from what you have said so i think your preparation because you have said just you need 3 months for preparation that's quite astonishing because like i've seen many students who keep on telling that i need like 6 months 12 months sometimes but i'm not actually telling anything wrong about it because i can understand the level of a preparation during a post graduation that's what it indirectly yeah. means because you would have started preparing pretty much well from your first year of post graduation itself so that is what has given you that much of confidence and that has reaped you so much of rewards in the form of a neat ss rank of 3 thank you sir and from when you have started reading prep ladder like 3 months back sir. 3 months back sir. Like after my research after my research so you have watched yes. the videos also and uh, not all the videos sir but i have watched like whatever i felt to, i was weak in i have watched you watched the videos and you saw the q bank also yes like okay. i didn't finish the q bank or anything but like i have solved many questions okay great so okay. actually it is kind of really really impressive i would say and at the same time people have to definitely admire you because for the hard work that you have put in the last 3 years that has reaped the rewards and happy that uh, you got benefited by prepared neat ss as well and hopefully yeah. and i think your dream field is either gastro or endocrine that's what i heard yes and of course yes. you can get it and there's no doubt about that and wishing you all the very best of the sachin thank you sir thank you thank you so thank much you, thank you so much bye bye